Jimmy Armijo Grover here with Gallatin River Guides and in this video we'll be tying Bloom's Parachute Caddis. Um, this has become my favorite dry uh, caddis dry fly pattern. Um, it floats well, it's highly visible, um, it sits low in the surface film um, and it catches fish. I really like the pink post on it as well. Um, kind of sets itself apart from the white foam floating on the water as well as other insects. Um, I've probably fished this on the Gallatin more than any other river um, and I've also fished it for the spruce moth hatch. This is the tan variation. Um, it can be tied in many different color combinations. You should try it out. So um, we're going to start off with our thread at the eye of the hook and then I'm going to wrap down about to the mid shank. Notice that I'm leaving a tag of thread um, sticking out the back. We'll be using that later for a rib. Um, and then I've grabbed uh, a fair few fibers of pheasant tail. Here I'm using Remac pheasant, but golden pheasant is a great, uh, great color to use as well, or a great feather to use as well. And with my first wrap, I want to get behind the thread. That gets uh, that makes it easier to start that third. Uh, or that first rib with the with the thread. Um, I was a little moved a little fast with that first wrap, but um, you get the idea there. Um, I'm going to tie that off about two thirds of the way up the shank, um, and then grab that tan thread, and we're going to counter wrap that um, to add some durability to this fly. Tie that off and trim off the excess. Um, <clears throat> I've already stacked um, my elk hair wing here. Um, usually the clump will fit kind of nicely in the gap of the hook. That, that might help you size your wings in the future. Um, and I attach that at the eye of the hook and then move my thread back to where I tied in the body or finished off the body. Um, I'll pull up the butt ends and trim those close at an angle. Um, and then I'll take my thread and kind of clean up that front section, making kind of a, a nice smooth um, spot for my thorax. Next we're getting some um, pink polypropylene yarn. This is kind of a pale pink. I'll attach it with about four wraps that are pretty close to each other. Um, this is where it gets kind of a little fumbly because you have your wing in the way. Um, in hindsight, you know, it might be easier just to um, hold that wing down with some wire, copper wire, lead wire, etc. But um, you want to form a nice, nice little post there um, for your hackle. And I'm using a barred ginger hackle here for this and attach it in front of the post. And then all of my other wraps are going to wrap around the post all the way up to the top. I'll come back down and then we're going to um, dub our thorax before we, we wrap in that hackle. And we're using a, a hair's ear, um, kind of a light natural hair's ear blend here. And we'll just make a nice, nice thorax that covers all of the thread underneath. Trim off some of the excess stem and other things that are in the way. As you can see, there's a lot of fuzzies um, everywhere getting in getting in our way, but um, they'll clean themselves up eventually. Once I get that dubbed um, nice and clean, um, I'll grab that um, barred ginger feather and then wrap that from the top down. Um, and really the number of wraps is going to depend on the quality of the hackle. This, this is kind of a medium quality hackle. Uh, I think I got about seven wraps out of it. Um, a shorter, shorter um, rooster neck hackle, not a saddle. So, um, but that did the trick. Um, if you don't have bar ginger or Cree, um, a grizzly and a brown are pretty common as well. And notice I tied that hackle off around the post. Um, that uh, that keeps the thread a little bit cleaner. And then I can just whip finish in front of the eye and I was able to dub that thorax early on and not have to clean it up at all. So um, that's it. Hope you enjoyed and uh, it's, it's a great pattern.